That is what we are going to hear today. That there is no greater love than the love of God to you. Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Can you tap seven people and tell them you are loved, you are loved, you are loved, you are loved, you are loved. Let us just receive that good news that we are loved by God. Let's pray our favorite prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together today. I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From the book of Deuteronomy, it says, Hear, O Israel. Can you say, Hear? The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Can you say, the Lord is one? The Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Napalayo ka ba sa Panginoon? Iniiwasan mo ba si Lord? Kasi sa dami mong ginawang mali sa Kanya. Yung nahiyang-hiya ka na lumapit sa Kanya, Ito ang sasabihin ko sa inyo. Miss na miss ka na ni Lord. God misses you. So go home to Him. Go home to His embrace. Magpayakap ka muli. Huwag ka na mahiya. Sapagat miss na miss ka na niya. Sabihin mo sa mga katabi mo, miss ka na ni Lord. God misses you. So go home. Because God is your home. Put your hands up on your heart. Close your eyes. Lord, we want to come home to you. To your embrace. To where I really belong. Kung saan ako bagay? Sa yakap mo lang. Bigyan mo ako ng lakas ng loob. Na magbalik muli sa iyo. I receive your miracle today. I receive your embrace. In your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand. Bless His name. Thank you, Jesus. Before you sit down, look at people around you. Sabi mo sa kanya, you look good today. For the last 12 months, we were able to unpack the first four books of the Bible. Kung nakasama na namin kayo dito ng matagal, nanunood, o pumupunta rito, for the last 12 months, pinag-usapan na natin ang Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And today, we are going to go to the fifth book of the Torah. Ang Torah ay ang collection ng limang unang libro sa Biblia. And the fifth book is called Deuteronomy. Can you say that please? So, itong limang librong ito, ang tawag sa kanila ay Torah. Sabi nyo nga, Torah. Tingnan nyo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, Torah. Tatakutin mo konti, no? What is Torah? Torah is composed of the 613 laws of Moses. 
focus on the Exodus. Nandun halos lahat sa book of Exodus, 613 laws of Moses. But when you look at the literal translation of Torah, it is not translated as laws. It is translated as teaching. Teaching. Kaya pag inaral na natin itong Deuteronomy, do not look at it like the law from the law. Inutusan ako ni Lord. Hindi. Look at it as something that God is telling you, tinuturuan kita. Kaya pag alam natin na hindi ka inutusan ni Lord, tinuturuan ka ni Lord, iba na ang pagbasa mo ngayon sa Torah. We must read the first five books not as God's law, but as God's teaching for all eternity. Ulitin ko, hindi ka inuutusan, ikaw ay tinuturuan. Di ba ayaw nating inuutos-utusan? Tama ba? Di ba pag inutusan ka, utos na naman, ano na naman, ganyan. Parang yung anak, inutusan ng tatay. Sabi niya sa anak niyang lalaki, Anak, ibili mo nga ako ng soft drinks. Alam mo yung anak? Sabi sa tatay niya, Coke o Pepsi? Sabi ng tatay, Coke. Diet o regular? Regular. Bote o in can? Bote. Eight ounce o litro? Oh, tanong ng tanong, di ba? So nainis na yung tatay, Hen, ako, tubig na nga lang. Mineral o distilled? Mineral. Malamig o mainit? Hampasin kita ng walis dyan eh, sabi nung tatay. Alam mo sagot nung anak? Walis? Hampasin mo o walis? Tambo o tingting? Sabi nung tatay, hayop ka! Baboy o baka? Ay, peste! Sabi nung anak, ipis o daga? Kaya ang sabi nung tatay, wag mo na nga lang akong ibili. Alam mo sagot nung anak? Thank you po. Ayaw nating inuutusan. Kaya itong babasahin natin at inaaral, actually, pangalan pa lang, hindi laws. Teaching. Tinuturuan. Para ano? Ikabuti ng ating buhay. Why is this important? It is important to know that the 613 laws were written for a specific time and place. Ito'y isinulat para sa panahon na yon. Kaya pag alam natin, ah, isinulat ito sa panahon ngayon, hindi mo pwedeng i-copy-paste at ilagay sa panahon ngayon. May mga gusto silang universal laws na kailangan kunin na mag apply today. But not everything. Kaya pag inaaral na natin ito, the question, crucial question we need to ask when we look at the 613 laws, when we look at the teachings of Jesus or the teachings of the Deuteronomy of Torah, we need to chew on this question. How do you want me to love you today, Lord? Paano kita mahamahalin ngayon? Actually, the name of the book, Deuteronomy, says this message. Alam nyo ang literal translation ng Deuteronomy? Second Torah. Pangalawa, Second Torah. Bakit nagkaroon ng Second Torah? Ano yung first? Yung first ay sinulat yan para sabihin sa mga Hudyo na lumabas sa Egypt papuntang lupang pangako, ito ang batas na susundin nyo sa disyerto. Forty years sila dito eh. Hindi pa sila pumapasok doon. So ito yung mga batas. Deuteronomy is the second Torah telling them, ito naman ang mga batas at turo pag pumasok na kayo. Saan? Sa lupang pangako. Magkaiba yung nasa labas at magkaiba ang nasa loob ng mga batas at alituntunin. Loving God in the desert may be different from loving God in the promised land. Kaya, yan ang ibig sabihin nito. Ha? Now, let me go to the heart of Deuteronomy. The heart of Deuteronomy is Shema. Sabi nyo nga, Shema. Shema means hear. Hear. Makinig. 
It is the first word of the command yung binasa natin, Hear, O Israel. Alam niyo, tamang-tama talaga. This is the movement of the Holy Spirit in our feast. We are talking about Shema. We are talking about here. And today, we, for the first time in the history of Feast Alabang, we have a deaf interpreter. Kaya nung misa pa lang, kung ikaw ay online, napapanood mo, meron tayong square doon sa gilid at nag interpret nito para sa mga deaf people. Tamang-tama, hear. Kailangan din nilang marinig. Hear, O Israel. Tapos anong sabi doon? The Lord is one. Sabi nyo nga, the Lord is one. Alam niyo kung gaano ka-sacred ang Shema sa kanila? Ay parang tayo mga Katoliko, Kristiyano, napaka-sacred sa atin ang panalangin ama namin. Sa kanila 'yan. And they pray it two times a day, one in the morning, one at the evening. Grabe, Shema. And you know what Shema is trying to declare? The first declaration is that the Lord is one. Kakaiba ho ito ha? Pag yung declaration nila na iisa lang ang Diyos, yan ay kakaiba doon sa panahon nila. Kasi sila po ay pinaliligiran ng mga nations na napakadaming Diyos ang bawat isa. Napakadami. They are surrounded by polis, polytheistic people na ang Diyos nung is... Dami. Example, Egypt. Ang Egypt, ang pinakamataas na Diyos nila, si Ra. Si Isis, si Osiris. Pag pumunta ka naman dito sa kabila, yung Canaanites, sino ang mga Diyos nila? Si Baal, si Ashira, si Anat. Doon naman sa taas, Mesopotamia. Sino ang mga Diyos ng Mesopotamia? Si Marduk, si Ishtar, si Anu. Tapos itong mga malalaking Diyos, may mga maliliit, napakadaming Diyos sa paligid nila. Biglang sasabihin nila, iisa lang ang Diyos, yung amin. Tapang. Grabe. Pero yun ang utos ng Diyos. Ako lang. Walang iba. Tingnan niyo ako. Today, dami nating Diyos. Napakadami. Aminin. Tingnan niyo yung katabi niyo. Di ba? Maraming inahabol yan. Oh, very, very practical. Ako, ako naman ang tingnan niyo. Do you worship your phone? Mm-hmm. Do you worship your phone? No? Sige nga. Mamaya after the feast, iwan mo yan dyan sa upuan mo. Tapos lumabas ka. Pagbalik mo rito, good luck. Sino sa inyo nawala na ng cellphone? Okay, mahiya, taas mo ang kamay. Ayan, tingnan nyo yung mga nakataas ang kamay. Anong naramdaman nyo nung nawala ang cellphone nyo? Tulala. Diba? Para, ha? Sometimes we worship our phones. Sino sa inyo nahulugan na ng phone? Yung nahulog yung phone. Okay, maya. Ayan. Naalala nyo nung nahulog yung phone mo? Nung paghulog? Boom! Ano nangyari sa kaluluwa mo? Humiwalay. <laughs> diba? para what? Hala! Diba? Talagang alalang-alala ka. Baka masira ha? Pero nung panahon namin, no, nung nag-uumpisa ang phone, hindi kami nag-aalala sa mga cellphone na nahuhulog. Apakatibay! Naalala nyo? Yung Nokia, ang tibay? Pag nahulog yon, kumakalas yun. Oo, tanggal lahat, pati baterya. Pero alam mo, reaksyon namin, tawa. <laughs> Bakit? Kunin mo lahat, isa-isa, ikabit mo, umaandar pa. Ang tibay! We worship our phones. Kaya nga, may nabasa akong comics. Isang, isang picture lang, nakakatawa. Tingnan nyo ako ha. Pag-akyat daw natin sa langit, lahat tayo nakaganito. Pero walang phone. Walang phone sa langit eh. Pero lahat tayo nakaganyan. Sanay na kasi tayo. We worship it. 
at marami pang iba, pero meron pang isa, we worship ourselves. We worship ourselves. Ang Diyos natin, ating sarili. Parang ganito, tingnan niyo. Naghahanap po ako ng trabaho, yung ako po sana, yung masusunod. <laughs> Grabe, no? Sa so, pinag-isipan ko to parang meron to eh. Meron, pwede kang pag-applyan, tapos sabi mo, ako sana ang nasusunod. Ano? Ito. Zumba <laughs> instructor. Ha? Ikaw talaga masusunod dyan, di ba? Kung di sumunod sa'yo, eh, ba't pa sila sumama? No? We worship ourselves. We worship our addictions. We worship our distractions. And now, God is calling you, come home. That is why we need to pray the Shema. Hear, the Lord is one. Siya lang, wala nang iba. The Lord is one. Tapikin mo yung nasa kaliwa mo. Tapikin mo, sabi mo, the Lord is one. Yung isa ang tinapik niya, yung nasa kanan eh. Yung kabilang kaliwa, ha? One day, a religious leader asked Jesus because he wanted to debate with Jesus. Sabi niya kay Jesus, what is the greatest commandment among the 613 laws of Moses? What is the greatest commandment? Grabing tanong, ano? Parang gusto nilang pumili si Jesus sa 613. Anong pinakamahalaga dyan? Si Jesus hindi pumili. Doon sa 613, ang pinili niya ay yung alam ng lahat na pinagsasabi nila umaga at gabi. The Shema. Sabi ni Jesus, the most important one is this. Hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Kaya nung sinabi ito ni Jesus, here, it doesn't mean you just receive sound waves in your eardrums. No. Shema is a robust word. It means both hearing and obeying. Narinig mo at sinunod mo. Yung iba, naririnig lang, hindi sumusunod. Pero itong salita ng Diyos, it means loving God with your all, your head, your heart, your hands. And it also means you do not just listen once, you do not just obey once. God may be telling you something different today than yesterday. So this is what you do. Keep listening. Tapikin mo naman yung nasa kanan mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, keep listening. <laughs> Patuloy pakinggan ang sinasabi ng Diyos. At si Jesus, he kept on listening to God when he he, he knows Shema. Hudyo yan si Jesus eh. Pinanganak na hudyo. Memorize niya. Alam niya. Ibig sabihin. Pero alam niya, hindi pa ito ang kompleto. Meron pang kulang. Kaya nung tinanong siya, what is the greatest commandment? Alam niya na kailangan maidagdag. So he quoted a command from the book of Leviticus that will really make you look at your decisions and decide on these two greatest commandments. And Jesus said, the second is this, biglang may ganun. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Grabe. Bigat. Halos kapantay ng pag-ibig mo sa Diyos. Kaya tingnan niyo ako, hindi pwedeng mahalang natin si Lord tapos di natin mahalang kapwa natin. Kailangan nandun pa rin ang pag-ibig natin sa mga tao. Hindi pwedeng, Lord, ako lang at kayo, ha? You and me, Lord, against the world. It cannot be. Because the world, the people in the world is part of your growth. Kasama po yan. Kaya ang tanong, Lord, how do you want me to love you today? 
Nag-iiba yan minsan. Depende sa season ng inyong buhay. Naalala ko noon, kami ni Lalen, kami ay talagang nagkakilala sa ministry work. Hindi pa kami mag-boyfriend, mag-girlfriend. We are serving the Lord in our own way. And then, nagkilala kami. And then, nung nagkaroon na kami ng anak, I was tasked to open the feast here in Alabang. Ito ang aking assignment. So, anong gagawin ko? Kakapanganak lang ni Lelaine kay Johan sa aming pangalawang anak. So, usap kami. Sabi ko lang, paano yan? I need to open the feast in Alabang. First time. Alam niyo, si Lelaine nagdasal. At ang dasal niya ganito, Lord, sa sitwasyon ko ngayon, how will I love you today? And God's answer was clear. Alagaan mo yung mga anak mo at payagan mo ang asawa mo buksan ng feast. Kaya ako, andito, ginagawa ko yung trabaho ko sa feast. Si Lelaine, ito ang trabaho ko ngayon. Palakihin to mga bata. Ganun. How will you love God today? Yan ang malaking tanong. Who is Deuteronomy speaking to? Sino kausap niya? Deuteronomy was speaking to all those returning to God. You need to understand that the book Deuteronomy was compiled not during their entry into Promised Land. It was compiled 600 years after. Sino kausap nito? Ang una ay yung mga papasok sa lupang pangako. Yung pangalawa, yung mga pinaalis sa lupang pangako 600 years after. They are in Babylon. Sila ay mga alipin doon. Tapos binglang, yun ang sinasabi sa kanila na ano, pag uwi nyo, itong gawin nyo. Sabi, no? Ibig sabihin, may pag-asa, makaka-uwi kayo. Kanino sinulat ito sa pangatlong audience? The third audience was those who were coming home already. And then they saw, ito pa ang lupang pangako, ba't sira-sira? Wala yung templo, tumaob, lahat ng bahay namin sunog. Ito ba? Yun. Kaya itong Deuteronomy was written to all those who are coming back home. Pauwi sa pangako ng Diyos. But there is a fourth audience. The fourth audience Gusto niyo malaman ko sino? Gusto niyo malaman? Pilitin niyo ako. Sige na, pilitin niyo ako. Luhod kayo, luhod. Ha? Yung fourth audience na kinakausap nung nagsulat ng Deuteronomy ay ang katabi mo. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Siya ang audience. Bakit? Kasi lumayo na yan sa Panginoon noon. Ikaw din, lumayo ka na rin sa Panginoon. Kaya itong Deuteronomy na aarali natin ng ilang linggo ay para sa iyo. Para sa akin, para sa katabi mo. Tayong mga umalis na at nagpipilit na mas marunong ako sa Panginoon. Tapos you finally realize, hindi nga pala, baka uwi na nga. Deuteronomy is a book written to all prodigals. All prodigals. And every single person that wants to come home. Kaya ang title ng series na ito, Dear Prodigal. Dear Prodig, sa ating lahat. You know, this week, I received a lot of messages online. TikTok, Facebook. Grabe. At ang message nila, paano pa ako babalik kay Lord? Hiyang-hiya na ako. Makasalanan na. Ang dami ho, walang biro. Sobra. Kaya, baka nakikinig ka ngayon, kinakausap ka na ng Diyos. This book is for all of us. This book is for you so that you will go back home to His embrace. There is a parable that Jesus told everybody during His time. We read this last week. 
the prodigal son. Di ba? Kaalala niyo yung prodigal son? Pero ito yung gusto kong isipin niyo. Kung paano sinasabi ni Jesus ito sa mga kausap niya? Kasi pag binasa lang natin, parang ang ganda ng kwento, oh, nakatouch. <laughs> Ibang iba yan nung panahon ni Jesus. Nung kinikwento ni Jesus ito, yung mga kausap niya, mga hudyo, niiyak. Bakit? Damang-dama nila na sila ang kinakausap ni Jesus. Alam niyo yung kwento, di ba? Yung anak, kinuha lahat ng uh, mana niya. Tapos, inubos. Tapos nakita niya ang sarili niya, nagpapakain na lang ng baboy. Sila yun. Alipin sila ng mga kusino sino na dati they were a great nation under David and Solomon. And then all of a sudden, they have been conquered by everybody. Kaya habang kinikwento ni Jesus ito, biiyak sila. Pero meron pa akong gustong ipakita sa inyo. Look at me. Nung kinikwento ni Jesus ito, umiiyak silang lahat. Si Jesus, yung, 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 yung mukha niya, hindi ko, hindi ko kaya, hindi ako, dati akong artista, pero hindi na ngayon. No? No, yung, yung, umiiyak yung kausap niya, pero siya, parang, Sayang-saya ikwento ito. Bakit? Ito yung kwento, ha? Nung umalis na yung bata, na-realize niya mali, umuwi siya, and Jesus said these words, But while he was still long way off, his father saw him, and he felt compassion. Imagine yung mukha ni Jesus, and ran, and embraced him, and kissed him. Yung mga nandun, no? tumutulo yung luha, biglang bumalik. Bakit? Nag-iba itsura ni Jesus. Sinasabi niya, oh, grabe yung ginawa, ganyan. Pero nung nakita niya, tunak-tumakbo yung tatay. Niyakap yung anak. Sila talaga, ano nangyay? Who is the storyteller? Sino nagkukwento sa kanila? Si Jesus. Bakit ganun yung ora ni Jesus habang nagkukwento? Alam niyo bakit? That was his sacred mission to welcome every prodigal. Kaya ako pumunta rito para dyan. Skinikwento na niya. And in this story, Jesus is the Father. That's his mission. I came here to do that. And I want to tell you this. The same. Sa buong linggong ito, dami mong ginawang kasalanan. Kakahiya ka. Malis ka. But I would like to encourage you as your friend. Go home. Come home to God's embrace. Punta ka sa Kanya. Kahit hiyang hiya ka, kahit nakatungo ka, lakit ka, kahit takot ka. Bakit? Baka parusahan ka nila. Basta umuwi ka lang. Balik ka lang. At paglapit mo sa Kanya, ito yung gusto kong gawin niyo. Tingnan niyo siya. Tingnan ninyo ang Diyos na hindi mo sinunod. Ang Diyos na iniwan mo. Ang Diyos na sinaktan mo. Tingnan mo ang reaksyon niya. Kasi lumalapit ka na muli sa kanya. Watch this. God misses you so much. So come home. Come home to His embrace again. Let's all stand and come to prayer. Your spiritual journey is your personal journey with the Lord. And He meets you where you are. Kaya yung Jesus running towards you, is, it's meeting you where you are. Baka matagal ka nang nagpapahabol, takbo ng takbo, be still. 
paabul ka na and just receive his love receive his mercy today can i ask you to put your hands upon your heart just close your eyes bow down your head hindi malayo si lord sa iyo siya ay napakalapit Lord, we are your children here today. We want to come home to you, to your embrace. Fill us with your love. Brothers and sisters, just open your heart to Jesus. Huwag na mahiya. Mahal na mahal ka niya. Go back to his embrace. Payakap ka lang. Ay, hindi mo naiintindihan ang mga nangyayari sa iyo. Magpayakap ka lang kay Jesus. Let His love, perfect love for you, drive away all your fears. Kung ikaw ay pagod na, magpahinga ka sa mga yakap mo. Just be embraced by Him. You miss Him also. So embrace Him now. Embrace Him now. Embrace us, Lord. We need Your touch. We need You, Jesus.
express in our human terms or human language through each other. Maybe you're standing beside someone you love, kaibigan, sama sa pamilya, para talagang lubusan mong maramdaman ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Can I ask you to just embrace each other, your friends, your loved ones, and let that be God's embrace. Lord, a big hand. Bless His name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless it be your name. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Bring it home with you because God loves you so much. He misses you. Every morning you pray and just ask God's embrace. Yakap lang. Itang kita natin. Wala sa Biblia. Tumakbo ang Diyos. Dito lang sa kwentong ito. Kaya itsura ni Jesus nung kinikwento niya yan. Ah, grabe yan. Damang-dama niya. That is why the prodigal son is the pearl of all parables. Because that is a story of the sacred mission of Jesus to all of us until the end of time. That He will run. He will run to you is to meet you where you are. You are loved, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. As you sit down, tell people around you, you are loved, you are loved, you are loved. Amen. Such an impactful talk, yes. May we see a raise of hands? Kung sino po dito yung mga first-time attendees natin? Or... Ayan, let's all give a round of applause to our first time attendees. Welcome, welcome to the feast. May you all please rise. We would want to pray for you. Can you please rise? At mga beautiful and handsome faces. <laughs> welcome to our beautiful home, and we hope that you had a warm welcome here. Okay, let's all extend our reach to them as we pray, Lord. These are your children. These new faces are an amazing addition to our family. And we thank you for bringing them here, for calling them by name. Lord, we pray that through this new journey of theirs, by, welc- by entering in this very door, they have met new people whom they can call friends, whom they can call family. And they have been into a place where they can finally call home. Where they can feel your love every single time. And we pray, Lord, that as they enter upon this new journey, you will listen to all their heart's desires. You know what they want, Lord. You know their prayers. You know what they're going through. Answer them in your most perfect timing. And we pray that as they walk every journey, You will continuously embrace them, shower them with your unending love, so that in every step of the of the way they will spread their wings even further, magnifying your love and the plans that you have for them. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Welcome, welcome to the feast. We are so happy to have you here. And we also want to thank um all of those who invited our first time attendees. So stabs are currently being given to you. After this session, please go down because there are people who are more than willing to have a small chat with you all to get to know you all even better. Yeah. Next, may we see a raise of hands kung sino po dito yung mga birthday celebrants natin for the month of August. Do we have? Ayan, happy, happy birthday to all of you. And we also see a raise of hands sa mga wedding anniversary celebrants natin. Do, do we see a raise of hands? Ayan, we have couples in the house. So for all our birthday celebrants and wedding anniversary celebrants, may we all please rise because we would also want to pray for you. Ayan, happy birthday and happy wedding anniversary. Grabe. This place is filled with love. <laughs> 
So again, let's extend the reach to our brothers and sisters. Lord, thank you for another gift of life. Thank you for another year of love. Thank you, Lord, for allowing this people be a testament of the wonders that you can do to a person, Lord. I pray that this new year will be a year filled of answered prayers, a year filled of abundance, a year filled of prosperity, full of good health, Lord. And we pray that in every step of the way, they will journey with you in the center of their lives. You are their armor, God. And let love be the answer to everything that they will go through. Always be with them. Always let love thrive in their lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Happy, happy birthday.